Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a glitchy photo effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2018. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting uh, control N on the keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. And let's name this, um, let's see here, glitchy photo, because that's what we're making. Now, our width is going to be 3,840 pixels, our height of 2,160 pixels, resolution 150 pixels per inch, color mode RGB color, 8-bit uh, background contents, doesn't matter, we're going to be changing that anyway. Our color profile will be sRGB and uh, we're using square pixels. So let's hit create and we're now ready to begin. Now I have a link in the description below where you can download the image that I am using but feel free to use any photo that you want for this effect. It works with just about anything. Okay so let's bring in my photo which is this guy right here uh, and let's resize it to fill our canvas. Okay and then let's, re let's move it around until we have it where we want it to be like so. Hit enter and we now have our image on our canvas. Now one thing I do want to point out is that when I bring in photos it automatically converts it into a smart object. That's because I have uh, the option under edit preferences and general right here that says always create smart objects when placing. If you don't have that option checked or if you don't want things to be a smart object right away that's fine. It doesn't affect what we're going to do with this particular tutorial. Uh, I just don't want you to get confused because I have this little icon here that means it's a smart object and if you don't see it maybe you think you've done something wrong. I just want you to know you're not doing anything wrong. I just have this here. Okay so the first thing that I'm going to do because this is a smart object and I don't need it to be a smart object is I'm going to make a copy of this by hitting control J. Uh, you can do this also just so that you keep your original without making any changes to it. Okay let's actually name our original. Whoops. Let's just name our original as original so that we don't mess anything up. And then for our copy that I made I'm going to I'm just going to rasterize this so that it'll be a regular photo and not a smart object anymore and I'm going to name this as base. Okay so now I have my original photo which I don't need to see anymore and I don't need this background so let's throw that away. Uh, I have my original photo which I'm not going to touch in case I need to refer back to it later uh, and I've got my base layer. Okay now that I have my base layer what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some selections using my marquee tool. So let's select our marquee tool. Now you can find that over here under the toolbar. Okay and you want your rectangular marquee tool. Alright and what we're going to do is we're just going to make a series of selections of our main subject. So I'm going to select like this piece of his hair right there. Uh, I'm going to, oh uh, you can hold down shift on the keyboard if you want to select more than one. See I can select again here and it doesn't affect that. Uh, or if you want to make it easier on yourself so that you don't have to remember to hold down shift you can go up here under the options and you can do add to selection and select that. See this is your normal selection and this is to add to your selection. So now I can click and drag over here and then I can click and drag over here and it automatically adds to my selection. Okay so now what you want to do is just make a bunch of selections uh, of your subject uh, that you find interesting. Uh, like so and like so and try and make them different sizes and different places and that kind of stuff. Um, you know what, we'll, we'll do this uh, and let's just do this. Now I'm doing this quickly as you can tell uh, just to uh, just just to mess around basically and, and show you how, how this can be done. So there we go, uh, we've got a bunch of selections of our guy uh, and I think that's good enough. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this. So we're going to hit control J on the keyboard and nothing looks like it's changed here but on our layers palette you can see we now have a selection here if I turn off base layer and it's on its own layer. These are all the selections that we just made with our marquee tool. Okay so now let me turn back on the base and let's name this layer here as cuts like that because they are cutouts of our original photo. Okay. 
Next, what we're going to do is we are going to put a filter on this called Wave. So let's find that filter. It's under Filters, under Distort, and down here under Wave. Okay, and what we're looking for here is a number of generators of two. Wavelength is going to be 200, a max of 500. Our amplitude will be 550 with a max of 999. And our scale will be 20% and vertical of 1%. Our type is going to be square, and we're going to make sure to repeat the edge pixels. Now if you want, uh, unfortunately, this does not give you a preview live on your image. What it does do is have this teeny tiny little window over here where you can kind of sort of make out what it is that it's doing but not really. And there's no way to make that bigger or to show it up over here. So you just got to kind of fake it. And uh, the good thing about this is it's one single filter. So if you don't like what you've done after you've hit OK, you can always hit Control Z on the keyboard and then redo this filter and oh. Uh, see what comes up next, okay? Because it'll remember all of this so you can just redo it. Um, or you can just hit randomize a few times until something here looks good to you. But uh, honestly, it's so small and it doesn't show the background so you can't really see what it is, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's just hit OK. And you can see we now have this glitchy looking effect on our main uh, photo. But we want to change this even more. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our base layer. So select that now. And what we're going to do is another a few selections with our marquee tool, but we're going to do it from edge to edge, meaning from far left all the way to far right. Okay, so let's select from here to here, let's say, like that. Uh, and you want to make a bunch of them all different uh, heights. So you want to make a small one there. Uh, let's make uh, a big one like this here. Let's go uh, right under his eyes like this and make that kind of kind of like that. Actually, we don't want that one there. So let's uh, let's hit Alt on the keyboard. That will change it to a minus, and we will get rid of that guy like so. All right. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to go from about here-ish, let's say. Yes, much better. We want to keep his eyes as clear as we can because that will draw our attention in the final picture, at least for this one. Uh, and then we want to have one down over here. Let's make it like so. Uh, let's give his upper lip a little bit of something going on there. Uh, his bottom lip already has something, but we're going to give it a little bit more. Uh, let's make a nice thin one here. Uh, and a thicker one down at the bottom. Okay, so you can see what I did here. Let's make a thin, thin, thin little guy up here just to give the top a little something. And there you can see I've got all these selections. Now directly on this base layer, which is why we made a copy from our original in case we need to go back and change things, we're going to do the exact same filter. So we're going to go back to filter, go to wave, click on that, and you can see that it's made that change. Hit control D on the keyboard to deselect, and we now have this cool looking kind of effect going on where everything looks a little glitchy, but it's not quite finished yet because we're going to add in a little bit more glitchiness to this and then we're going to add in some scan lines. So let's add in some more glitchiness. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go up here to our top layer of cuts and then we're going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E on our keyboard. And what that does is it makes a merged layer of everything that you can see on your canvas, and it, it merges it down and puts that layer at the very top. So you can see we have this layer on top. I can turn these guys off, and, uh, and that gives us our finished look. However, like I said, we're going to add in some more... Um, some more glitchiness. So what we want to do is we want to make two more copies of this layer. So hit control J twice on the keyboard like that. And let's name our bottom layer here merged like so. Uh, and name the middle layer here merged red. And let's name the top one here merged cyan like so. All right. So now we have these three layers right here. All right, merged, merged red, and merged cyan. So let's go with our merged cyan layer, okay? And what we're going to do is we're gonna right click on that and we're gonna go here to blending options. Click on that. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the red channel right here under blending options. Just click that off. And you can see we now have kind of a bluish cyan color here. Hit OK. And then what we want to do is go down to our red layer. You want to right click on that, hit blending options. And what you want to do is uncheck the green and the blue. And that will give us this kind of red look. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to go to our move tool. So let's go to V on the keyboard, or you can go up here to the move tool. And you want to make sure that auto select is unselected, unchecked. Okay. So checked 
unchecked. Make sure it's unchecked. And then what you want to do is you want to grab the cyan layer by clicking hold down shift that will constrain your movement to left or right or up and down. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to move our cyan layer to the left slightly like so. Uh, I think a little less, maybe like that. That looks pretty cool. You got a little blue highlight there. Actually, we can use our arrow key, our left arrow key, to move it just a little bit more, and there we go. Then we wanna go to our merged red. You wanna click and hold down shift and drag that to the right slightly. Okay, and you can see we've now got this red highlight on the back side of his head. Okay, the left side of his head. All right, and there we have this really cool glitchy look to our photo. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to select our cyan layer, our topmost layer, and we want to add in a vibrance adjustment layer. So let's add in our vibrance adjustment layer. We want to go down here to saturation and just minus 40 on that. Now depending on your picture, the reason why I put in a vibrance uh, adjustment layer, this picture doesn't really need it. But just in case your picture is a little bit too bright or a little bit too colorful, or maybe it's not colorful enough, you can add in vibrance to add some, some color in like that, or you can pull the, the uh, color out a little bit more to make it look a little bit more faded. The vibrance is, is pretty good for doing that without actually ruining the color of your photo. So we're going to leave it alone for this photo, but feel free to play with that on your own. Okay, now that we have our, our picture looking like it's a, a glitchy old uh, uh, still shot from an old television broadcast, what we want to do is add in some scan lines to it. So we're going to add in a brand new layer above this. We're going to name this layer Scan Lines. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to do Edit and then Fill. Okay, and we're looking for the contents of a pattern. Okay, and the pattern that we're looking for, you gotta hit this little arrow here, go to the sprocket, you wanna go all the way down to web patterns, click on that, hit okay, and then you'll see these patterns right here, and we're looking for this guy right here, which is uh, horizontal line wide three. Okay, you want that guy right there. All right, then what you wanna do is make sure script is unchecked, you want mode to be normal, opacity 100%, preserve transparency is unchecked. Okay, because there's nothing there, so if you have that checked, nothing will happen. Okay, so you wanna hit OK, and you now have all these scan lines. The last thing that we need to do is change the blend mode here to uh, overlay, and then you wanna change the opacity down to about 50%. And there we have our glitch photo effect in Photoshop. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.